you'd have to really love the Volkswagen brand to want to spend mid 50,000s on one of their cars. If you can build a bit of emotion and passion into a car, whether it's its design or the engine or how it looks, then there's a good chance you can get someone to part with their money and get into something that is essentially a fancier looking Passat. Maybe that's why everyone I know in my life who has one of these cars has a company car allowance. Anyway, Volkswagen in the last 12, 18 months have done really, really well with the ID3 and ID4. And you'd kind of excuse them for saying, if you want something with electric, just buy one of those cars. And also there's the ID5 coming soon. But the Arteon now has a battery in it, a 13 kilowatt hour battery, and it'll do a range of mm, about 40 to 50 kilometers on a single charge. And we'll actually do motorway speed using just electricity, if you like. It'll take about three and a half hours to charge it on your wall box at home. It'll do 3.6 kilowatts charging. That's as fast as it's gonna get. And today we're gonna to have a quick look around Check out the boot, what's the interior like? I did cover the shooting brake of this car earlier on in this year, so if you wanna have a look at that video, it's up here. There's simply no other way to put it. It's just a gorgeous looking car sitting on 19 inch alloy wheels, the really prominent shoulder lines on it, creases in the door. One thing I really like about this exact car is there is 200 euros worth of an optional extra on it. So everything you're gonna see in this Arteon today is actually standard in the e-hybrid version of it. Blind spot, reversing cameras, um, electric powered boot, which can actually be accessed from the button in the driver's door. There doesn't seem to be, that I can see anyway, somewhere under here to open it. It's a vast boot, it's almost 600 litres. It's also full of nooks and crannies, storage places down here for cables, a net here to hold things into place, additional side pockets for storage, white LED, crisp bright lights, uh, decent shopping hooks that will actually carry something that's pretty heavy. And if you've got dogs, you can remove the parcel shelf. And even though it kind of has a saloon vibe, that hatchback really does give it an edge over something like a 5 Series. The main thing I can tell you about the back of the Arteon is just the legroom. It is vast. There's so much space. It feels almost limousine-like. Really big wide armrest. You might want to leave that down because for middle passengers, the seat's a bit narrow and the tunnel is huge. You can also access the boot of the car through the armrest. And I love the fact that the rear passengers get their own heated seats on the outside, their own individual aircon climate control uh, with their own independent vents. And under here is a two pin plug, a USB-C and a 12 volt. There's some nice ambient lighting here that lights up blue at nighttime. And the soaping roof design of the car, yeah, it does cut into your headspace a little bit, you know, it's, it's kind of that much of, of a gap. So taller passengers, Try it out in the back first if you're going to spend a lot of time in the back of this car. I'll start with the wireless charging tray because if you've got the car in park, it's really quite awkward to get that in and out, but at least it has wireless charging. There's plenty of USB-C options down here, and you can do wireless car play by pairing it up with the, the network that's on Volkswagen's own network in the car. The car is actually started now, but there's not a word out of it because there's a bit of charge left in the battery. And also this heads up display is rising up very, very slowly. Now it kind of bobbles around when you're driving over bumps as well. It kind of cheapens it. You, I kind of would have expected something to be projected onto the windscreen for the money. Sunglasses holder is present, something that you don't get in the new golf, for example. Stick your phone in there, keep them quiet in the back. You've got a GTE button and that brings the car a bit more to life. I'll explain the total output with combined electric motor and petrol engine in a little while, but it's a 1.4, which you might have been a little bit surprised to hear. Glove box, loads of space. There's even a little twisty knob for turning on the chilled version. The interior, really nicely put together. Like that dashboard actually kind of reminds me of the uh, Touareg. If you don't like Volkswagen's newest slidey system for climate, you're gonna love this because it has physical kind of buttons. There's like just a big red button, big blue button. You wanna get hotter, colder, heated seats, everything is there and it's, it's not on the actual screen. What is good about the screen though, you can obviously time your charging. You can find out how much of your journey has been in full electric mode. And generally when I've been driving it with a bit of range in the battery, that's 100%. So if you even really floor, you still get plenty of power and torque from that electric engine. Uh, it has Volkswagen steering wheel, controversial. Some people love the buttons, some people don't. And they've also left in a nice big storage box just at your right hand knee as you look at the dashboard. 
All the displays are colour, graphics, you can have your nav in here, you can have your nav there, it'll tell you all different ranges and loads of different settings. So all that stuff is standard. If you were to spec an Audi A5 Sportback, for example, with all this stuff, you would be talking 70 plus grand. 1.4 petrol and a just over 100 brake horsepower electric motor brings you to a grand total of just under 220 brake horsepower, which is good. The problem is, when your battery runs out, this is a very heavy 1.4 petrol car. Yes, if that happens, you can charge the car on the move, because you can just be in hybrid mode also, and that will use the petrol engine to put range back into the battery pack. But that kind of defeats the purpose. You're trying to be efficient, you're trying to be green, and then you're wasting petrol to put power into a battery. It just makes no sense, but it is good to have the option there, I suppose. Now, it does mean that, I mean, this car is doing something like three liters per 100 kilometers. Like, it'll do 230 miles per gallon if you're watching this in the UK, but you have to have it charged at all times. And that's gonna cost you somewhere around two quid to charge it. If you do that every day, you really will run on nothing, like just electricity. And if you're doing a commute of whatever, you know, 20 kilometers in, 20 kilometers out, provided you're not using a motorway, you really will achieve that. It won't be a problem. So then you've got your GTE button. You push that, electric boost comes on your screen, and straight away the rev counter sits right up into the actual petrol engine range of the car, where generally it's just tipping away in regen and charge mode. And then when you floor it, you know, you do have lovely bursts of power. But as I said, once that range goes, well, you're a bit snookered. Also, the weight of the car, it still does handle well. I think the steering is sharp in it. Uh, I've chucked it into a couple of corners. It's gonna, it's gonna weigh a little bit more than the petrol version of the car. So from that aspect, yeah, it might be a little less sharp into the corners. If this is a long range car for you, you'd probably be in a diesel one, first of all. <laughs> but it's just a very comfortable car. Like there's different, dynamic chassis control settings in it, just leave it in comfort, it's fine. That's all you need it to do, because it, it is, it's a, it's a kind of a, a wafty floating car. Not in a kind of, it's like a barge going around corners, but it's just, it's very comfortable. Even on the 19s, bumps don't really give it too much hassle. And yeah, it's just, it's a long range cruiser type of car. And it also, I mean, it gets an awful lot of looks on the road, because especially in white, obviously it stands out again. But the Arteon has always been a really, gorgeous looking car that overhang in the front like it's it's one of the best looking cars in its class and, and has been uh, since it came out like three four four years ago now do totally appreciate this money you're going to be looking at an Audi A6 an A5 5 series even the Lexus ES300 H that we had on, on the channel there's a lot out there and there's a reason you don't see too many RTNs on the road and that's half the attraction. Because you'll have something that's actually properly rare and isn't in every car park in Dundrum and Blanchardstown and wherever else. You just don't pass too many of these on a daily basis. And that's probably why it gets so many looks as well. Because for some people, they're like, what is that? I'm sitting behind a Passat now in traffic and it's just like, there's no comparison. This is just a far better looking car. Overall, a gorgeous car from Volkswagen. Yes, it is expensive. Yes, the battery compromises how it hands a little bit. Yes, it bugs me that there's halogen indicator repeaters when everything else is LED. But as a whole package, for what you get, even if you just go for a petrol version of this car, it, there's an awful lot in it. And the Arteon once upon a time when it came out felt very, very expensive. With this spec and PHEV, I do feel like there's actually a bit of value in it now when you factor everything in. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for your subscription, your likes, your comments, anything you've done on the channel today in this video or in the past to be beyond 20,000 subscribers is absolutely deadly and I couldn't have done it without you. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.